You're listening to The Fitness Lounge, where we discuss in-depth everything from fitness, health, wellness, and mindset. Whether you're just beginning your fitness journey or you've been involved in fitness for years, we have a little something for everyone. So just sit back, lounge for a bit with us, and enjoy. And now for your hosts, Nick Messer and Ben Miller. Hi, welcome back to the Fitness Lounge. I'm your host, Nick and Ben. And we are going to be talking about cardio, the hidden component to building muscle. Believe it or not, <laughs> this actually does play a, a big effect if you use it right to allowing you to grow muscle. And I think the biggest stigma in the industry is if you do cardio, you're going to lose muscle. Or if you just don't like cardio. I hear cardio and I'm like, Ugh. yeah, that's that's how I am. I'm not I a hate big cardio fan. Yeah, not a big cardio fan. Never have been. I've been more of the short short sprint, you know, forty yard dash. But don't put yeah. me on a mile run or hit training. I like hit training. Hit training I can do, but uh, long term sustained cardio. And and really, when you think about cardio, cardio is is all of the above. Anything mm-hmm. that gets your heart rate up. So yeah. we're we're talking about all the different aspects today. Um, but before we dive in, just want to let you know if this is the first time that you have. Um, checked in with us and you're listening to to us for the first time make sure you go back and listen to some of our previous episodes as well we got a lot of content that we've released so far and we'll continue to release content weekly uh, twice a week and we were just actually talking about releasing a few extra episodes here and there surprise episodes for you guys so make sure you're following us subscribe uh, hit that button and we're going to get rock and rolling so as we were putting this uh, this episode together uh, I went online to do a little bit of you know background research to make sure I had some accurate pieces to pull from for you guys. And <clears throat> I cited something directly from Men's Journal. I'm going to read it verbatim for you. So according to a new review of 14 studies, aerobic training like running, walking, and cycling not only doesn't diminish leg muscle mass, it actually increases it. In several of the studies reviewed, both younger and older men who did about 45 minutes of cardio four days a week at 80% of their maximum heart rate increased their leg muscle size by 5% and 6% respectively. So um, the, the example I like to use for people when we talk about cardio as it relates to muscle, mm-hmm. um, and you can even Google this, there, and there's there's images that show them side by side is look at a marathon runner and look at an Olympic sprinter. And you can see obviously in their overall physique, but if you especially look at their legs, massive difference. I mean, we're talking, you know, probably 20, 30 inches in circumference Mm -hmm. difference between the two. Um, Yeah. I saw, I was looking at this well, I saw the same thing, you know, it said like one of the best ways for building leg muscle, you know, it's talking about the rowing machine actually, you know, Mm -hmm. because, and it was targeting your quads and, and calves and the uh, stairmaster. It would, you know, actually, just about any piece of cardio equipment, like you just said, will increase the leg size. Doing it right, of course, not like not being on it for two hours, but <laughs> right. If you're if you're doing it in more of an explosive, so even like yeah. the bike doing sprints, because yeah. they you're firing off those specific fibers. Um, and then, of course, you know, like you said, the stairmaster because that is an upward motion as mm-hmm. opposed to a forward motion. So you're firing and moving in an upward pattern. Uh, and then the row machine. The thing I like about the row machine is incorporates a lot. It allows you to incorporate a lot because you can. Whole body, use, yeah. yeah, you can use it with. You can lock out your legs and do just upper body. You mm-hmm. can you know not use your arms and just use lower body. Yep. You can incorporate everything. So that's personally why I, why I like it. Especially when my trainer goes, all right, I want you to row five hundred meters. I'm like I'm using every leg, I, every muscle I can oh, yeah. to to get there. Well, there's a you know there's a technique to it also when you're trying to go for distance and time. It's not hard to master it. Actually, when I went to the State Trooper Academy, that was one of the, that was actually the uh, physical fitness test to get in. It was the yeah. rowing. It was a rowing machine, yeah. You had to row, uh, now I can't remember what it was. I want to say it was 2,000 meters in X amount of time. But they show you, when you get down there, they show you a technique to use that helps, you know, and time it still kicks your butt. Oh, Yeah. But it's a lot better than doing it with improper form. Well, yeah, absolutely. It's kind of like climbing the ropes in, in yeah. boot camp. They teach yep. you how to wrap your feet and move yep. up as opposed well, to... Well, yeah, you can actually... Yeah, morning. you can wrap it around your foot and put your other foot on top and you don't even Lock have to use your in. hands. Really. Exactly. Well, you need to hold on to it, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying you don't have to pull with your hands. 
when I did that that one time, I actually did use my, all my arms. I made it to the top with nothing but arms. That's a workout. <laughs> it, That's a workout. Is, it is, but I couldn't yeah. quite figure out the foot placement. Still we go. <laughs> I know when I was doing my prep though for my cardio was the stairmaster. That, that's all I did. You know, three or four days a week for about twenty minutes and at various speeds. And I, uh, it, I mean, it shredded my legs, but I, I, I could see a little growth in them. I mean, not a lot, but you know, because I've always had a hard time growing my legs, but I could see a difference in it. You know, I, I've had uh, probably over the last, I don't know, decade, the most amount of cardio that I've done was probably more recently when uh, Jay told me, he goes, hey, we're going to do a conditioning day. And I was like, what? I probably scared you. Oh, well, yeah. And then, <laughs> you know, I'm gassed by the end of it. And so now I'm doing better incorporating it. And I'm mm-hmm. and the main, the biggest thing I noticed wasn't so much of an immediate muscle impact as yeah. far as, oh, wow, look, I put on, you know, half an inch yeah, or, you know, yeah. it was more of I'm able to go longer in my workouts so I'm not gassed as early because a lot of times what was gassing me wasn't the muscle I was working. It was my heart, Yeah, you know, so uh, that's a tough, that's a tough lesson to learn as you're going through fitness. Well, it also builds up endurance as well, you mm-hmm. know, muscular endurance also, especially when you're working out with someone like Jay, like, yeah, I'm sure you could probably tell the difference from when you first started to now by doing that with him. Oh, vast difference, a uh, vast amount of difference. You don't have to try to stall as much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, shorter rest periods, and you know, yeah. by the time I'm finished with my session, I'm, I'm going and doing more after my session yeah. as opposed to saying, ah, I'm you're not, You're not smoke checked. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which is which is good, because not every t- day we go in there where you're doing you know, full body, or a lot of times we're right. focusing on one thing, and normally in my own workout, it'd be like that one thing plus a couple others. So yeah. now I'm able to go back and do the couple others as opposed to going home and laying down. <laughs> <laughs> Crashing. So, oh, yeah. So, so whether you're doing a shorter term sustained cardio, like 30 to 40 minutes hit or explosive cardio, it all has a positive impact on your muscle. Mm-hmm. As you mentioned in a pre- few previous episodes, when you're doing hit training, usually it's explosive, it's fast paced. Sometimes it has some resistance base to it. Uh, whether it be like battle ropes or, Mm -hmm. you know, or even just body weight in general. Um, So that additional amount of resistance doing that multiple times over and over and over again, as opposed to, again, you know, more of like running in a forward motion where there's little resistance. It's more of an impact than it is a resistance. Right. Right. Um, Plus, you know, when you're doing the, when hit training and stuff, it's going to be usually, uh, better for joints because you're loading your muscles and not mm-hmm. loading the joints taking the impact. Yeah, I'd recommend, you know, for people who are starting to get into it, especially for hit training, like try it on different pieces of equipment. You know, try one time on the treadmill, try one time on the Stairmaster, try one time on the bike or, you know, uh, what's that, the elliptical. The elliptical. Hell, you could even do it on the rowing machine. I mean, when I would do my do anyway. my sprint hits, I would turn the, the treadmill up to like 12 speed, like yeah. fast, and I would sprint for 30 seconds and I would, you know, lift myself off, plant my feet on the side, yep. let it continue to go for, you know, a minute, two minutes and then jump back on, yep. easing myself, you know, holding my hands like I was walking be for careful physical that. therapy. <laughs> but that's how I would do it. And I would do that, you know, six times with a minute to, you know, two minute breaks in between depending on how I was right. doing. Uh, and that was right after I stopped doing uh, Insanity. Well, you should have been good for that then, right? Yeah, at that time I was. At the time I was. What about doing it now? Uh, yeah, good luck. <laughs> Barf bag. Yeah, right. <laughs> body bag. <laughs> <laughs> so we've talked about this before as well. The uh, So when you do cardio, it increases blood flow to the muscles, you know, allowing for more nutrients to arrive in the cells. And um, it's actually probably the best time, as we've mentioned before, is, is to do it after resistance training. Exactly. And as you mentioned, having that blood flow, you're trying to get the nutrients that your body has just burned off, right. used up. Um, so getting them back into the muscles. I mean, in the middle of it, it's, it's designed to get oxygen to the muscle cells, right? So it can operate. Right. Um, but after the fact, it's a great way to redistribute those nutrients back in, make sure that your muscles fill back up, especially if you're taking like an immediate post-workout shake, mm-hmm. uh, protein, carbs, anything like that. Those are going to be the best options for you to get that flowing right back in. Yeah. And it's, it's usually after the fact is, you, let, me, let me make sure I'm clear. I wouldn't recommend taking a post-workout shake and then go do a hardcore hit training. I would do that after the fact. Oh, yeah. But if you're doing a low 10, 15 minute slow cardio just simply to get the blood flowing and keep it flowing, mm-hmm. then you could probably do the shake before that because hopefully your heart rate will be 
hunting down. Right. I don't usually like to take anything while my heart rate's oh, I don't either. jacked. I like to do it all at the end. Yeah. Um, so we talked in a previous episode about the difference between fast twitch and slow twitch fibers, where your fast twitch fibers are your more explosive, uh, higher strength, shorter um, energy span, and then your slow twitch fibers are more for sustained uh, long distance, not as great with um, you know heavy weights or resistance. So if you are gonna do sustained cardio, you know, 30, 40 minutes of jogging, uh, or even light levels on the Stairmaster or elliptical where you're obviously not doing anything that's designed to really spike your heart rate, yeah. you're gonna be activating more of the slow twitch muscle fibers. Uh, and when you're doing lifting like Ben and I do, where we do resistance training and we are focusing a lot on those fast twitch fibers, we tend to, obviously I do for sure, but we, I speak in a broad general sense, tend to ignore those slow twitch fibers. And so that's part of the muscle, whether it's, you know, your like in your calves, you have two muscles, your soleus muscle is mm-hmm. more comprised of slow twitch muscles than it is a fast twitch, but the gastroc, which gives you that nice little round bowl, that is comprised more of fast twitch. So yeah. if you're, certain muscles have more uh, percentage of one over the other. So if you're not focusing on both types of fibers, you're not actually working that muscle to its full capacity. Mm -hmm. And again, as you mentioned, it it increases endurance. Well, the endurance fibers are the slow twitch fibers. So if you can increase the endurance of those slow twitch fibers while you're working your fast twitch fibers in a different, you know, type of lift, you're going to feel like you can go farther because the other fibers are still going to be there for support. Right. So, um, and those, those usually are the number one ignored fibers in for the way we lift and yeah. vice versa for yeah. marathon runners. another way we would be ignoring them exactly so for a hit and expl- explosive training you know, it assists the muscle fibers to contract and lengthen at a fast alternating pace so when we contract the muscle fibers we also want to make sure that they have the ability to re-lengthen that's what's going to help with the growth because if it you we've all heard it or said it uh you know a tight muscle never grows i'm personally walking through that challenge right now yeah me too having to re-lengthen re um almost well in my case smush <laughs> smush yeah, out right. all the crap out of them um having to well, go get muscle stripped well it causes pain and you know not just on that particular muscle but everything you know below it and above it you yeah know, i'm going through that right now with my hamstrings your opposite tight. supporting muscles yeah you know my calves are hurting or that you know what are you, you were actually just talking about the calf muscles there the the gastroc mm-hmm. i think that's the one that goes up behind the knee that's the soleus soleus that goes from goes from ankle to so I, I get pains right there if i get if my hamstrings get too tight Really? So it's yeah. pulling on the on the top yeah. of the knee and it's pulling against the I'd knee. have to have someone, you know, kind of dig their thumb in there and, and try to do that, what do they call it, myofascial release. Mm-hmm. You know, it's painful as hell. Yeah, see, and mine, mine is more of an, an opposite as far as anterior, posterior. So uh, when my psoas muscles get really tight, I feel my pain in my lower back because mm-hmm. it's pulling across. Right. And, you know, because it does attach to the back of your sacrum on the, on the back mm-hmm. of your hips back there. And so as it tightens and you try and lengthen it, it's pulling and pushing. It that hurts. Yeah, yeah, absolutely it does. <laughs> um, I'm finding that out with my quads. You know, yeah. having not trained my hamstrings for so long, and my quads got really tight. Yep. And now they got to not only a point where they wouldn't continue to grow, but I mean, just even getting the slightest point of a deep tissue massage is painful. Mm-hmm. And so I've gone through uh, three visits now. I have another one coming up next week where I'm getting muscle stripped, which is like deep tissue on steroids, where she's just going in, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Dietra's her name. She, 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 What's her De- name? Dietra. Her name's Dietra. We she call sounds her, like she was stripping muscle. We, yeah, we, we call her Olga. She's, For she's, Russia? <laughs> no, she's a, she has some power. I'll tell you what. She's got she some is. major power behind her, and she, uh, yeah, she makes this grown man cry sometimes. But it's totally worth it since I've had, since I've been going, I've, picked up you know probably two or three extra striations in my in my quad that doesn't ask that since you've done this two or three times now, are you able to tell the difference oh man as as i told ti- well, first time as far as the tightness that you've been experiencing oh vastly yeah first time i was able to now and then of course i also have the hypervolt that i've been using yep. consistently yep. and so before where i was having trouble at like the second level with the big foam round ball yep. now i'm at the third level with the little accu accurate needle plastic the smaller one, yeah. oh yeah yep. and i can handle that 
So I know there's a big difference going in, and I've seen a, a difference in the size of my legs probably good. at least an inch or so in the last month. At some point here, when I, I need to go see her for my legs. Oh, yeah, to, totally but worth now it. Now you got me scared, though. To, oh, but it, it's worth it, I'm telling you. It's one of those, it's just like going in and doing a hardcore leg day. Yeah. You know you're going to like, hate it going through it. It's going to yep. suck, but the moment you finish, you're like, yes, that was what Especially I need. Especially two days after. Yeah, I've got one of those coming up here in the next couple hours, so. <laughs> Have fun with that. Yeah. So there's certain types of cardio that can also assist in stretching the soft tissue and joints. So the when we're talking about the the soft tissues, we're talking about like the ligaments, cartilage, and things like that. Mm -hmm. So doing um, doing more of the hip training, the explosive training, is a great way to re-strengthen those and get those used to impact as opposed to going in and doing very, very heavy lifts. Yeah. So if you're one of those people who has, you know, if you're, it's one thing if you're squatting 600 pounds, you need to wrap your knees, I get that. But if you're having trouble, you're squatting 200 or maybe even 300 pounds um, or even on bench press and you're just finding that your elbow joints, your shoulder joints, your knee joints are just really tight. More, more importantly, elbows and knees mm -hmm. um, because your, your hips and shoulder joints are more com complex joints in there. They yeah. got a lot more muscles, have a different range of mobility. But usually you'll find it in your elbows and knees. You said you had elbows issues. Yeah, right? actually mine are hurting right now. So a lot of times what happens <coughs> with that is you get so used to working with heavier weights as opposed to relengthening yeah. and, and letting some of that lighter impact um, where the, the muscles are having to fire, contract, stabilize around those joints. Those types of trainings, especially in, in HIIT training and other yeah. cardio, will help to strengthen that because going in and doing just straight um, resistance training works more on the muscle and as the muscle gets bigger, it puts more strain on the ligaments and tendons. So you, you gotta mm -hmm. kind of pair those two together. Right. So. Okay, so as it retains to cardio, cardio does specifically improve the strength of the heart, and that's what cardio is all about. It is the heart muscle, which is a muscle in and of itself, and the only way to train that is to get that muscle pumping faster and faster. This is one of the only muscles that doesn't deal in actual resistance training. It, this is more of the, the higher your heart rate can get, the more use it gets to being in that higher heart rate, get stronger, and then now it no longer needs to pump as uh, many times to get the same amount of blood flow through. It doesn't have to work as hard. Yeah, think about if you ever heard the story of Lance Armstrong. Did you ever hear like his, his story when he was a kid? Mm -hmm. that. When he was a kid, they, they and I, I can't remember the very, very specifics of it as far as like what his condition was that he had, um, but he went through many, many tests and what they found out is um, his heart rate was like super low, mm. but it's because his heart rate was very, very strong, abnormally strong. So one pump of his heart would push out as much blood as, you know, two or three of someone else's. Yeah. Um, so when he was going in and performing at high levels where everyone else's heart rate was, you know, 140, 150, his, I think, was like 100, 110, something like that. So what made him great at endurance was his heart rate wasn't blowing out on him right. when he was trying to hit those higher strides. And so he was able to outperform people. It was all because of his heart, which is what made him who he was. Um, That's why he pulled away from all those dudes. Right? Absolutely. Well, it, his heart didn't have to work near as hard to almost a point of, you know, cardiac arrest. Yeah. So, um, and in regards to doing resistance training, as I mentioned, you know, depending on how you're lifting, if you're doing, you know, power lifting, I mean, your heart's going to work in the minute of that lift, but you're doing such short-term lifts with long-term rest periods. If you're doing hypertrophy training, you're usually under the weight longer than you are out of the weight, right. out from underneath the weight. For the most part, your, your rest periods are shorter. So having a stronger heart to allow you to go through that will allow you to get back in under the weight in a shorter amount of rest period time. Whereas, like, like I said, for me, my muscles are ready to go, but my heart says, Hang on another 30 seconds. Yeah. If I can get back in faster, I can have that time under tension longer and the time out of tension shorter, which is what's going right. to help. Not only shorten my time in the gym, but it's going to help grow my muscles faster with the you know, same amount it's of a win. It's a win-win. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you think as we talk about this, it's funny. We have these revelations as Ben and I sit down. We'll sit after the episodes and we'll go, man, are we going to start implementing this in our fitness? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you know, 
it, just being real transparent and, and human, um, you know, it, it's very difficult to be everything all the time in fitness. Mm-hmm. You tend to gravitate towards one thing. I'll tell you one thing I'll never well, do. You I'll develop never a habit in that, in that, what we do, you know, it's hard to, and it's not, I'm not, not going to say it's a good habit, like we should venture off and do other stuff. It's good for you, you know, but. We, we're creatures of habit. Yeah. You know, and, well, especially, you know, military for you, you know, regiment, it's very easy. Yeah, yeah, structure. You know, that's kind of the same thing for me. And part of the reason why I have a trainer is to get me out of my own box because yeah. otherwise I'll be left with my own devices and then get in the same thing and then get into a plateau. Well, that's why I'm picking back over Jay again. I need to get out of this funk I'm in right now. Well, it looks like I'll, I'll at least have him through summer of next year for sure as I ramp up for this competition. Yeah. I still haven't picked it yet. Still haven't picked the. It, they haven't released the dates yet, so I'm just kind of like, all right. Well, I know I need you to look at last. Out. You can look at last year's schedule. And get yeah, yeah. I know it's going to be April, May, June. I just got to figure yeah. out because I want to do it here in. Well, Ronnie Coleman's in Fort Worth in April. Usually the first weekend. Yeah, I figure the farthest I'll travel is Houston. It's the farthest yeah. I'll go, uh, but I'd like to be somewhere here in Dallas. So well, Brandon Ward does one in Dallas as well. I don't know yeah. the name of that one. They, they, they have a few. And, of course, there's the Europa, which yep. that one's a big show. That's a two-day show. Yeah, that's, that's, a, a, that's a big It's a lot one. different than the one day. So, well, folks, well, hopefully this has been beneficial for you. Ben, official? Hey, I'm going to hey, start hey, using hey. that for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you have any questions about cardio, if you feel like we didn't hit something, feel free to, you know, shoot us a message on Instagram. If you're not following on Instagram, definitely follow us. We got some additional content that we're going to be posting on there here very soon, as well as our YouTube channel. Um, I definitely will say you want to be following our YouTube channel before October. We have some new stuff that's going to be YouTube exclusive only that we're putting in the works that's very specific on a video level so that you guys can see some more video content as opposed to just the audio. Mm-hmm. We'll continue to post the podcast on YouTube if, they, if you're already listening on YouTube. Um, but for those of you who are on our other platforms, Apple, Spotify, things like that. Um, some uh, good stuff coming on YouTube. Yep. So um, hopefully everything has been beneficial for you guys. We love hearing from you. So till next time, keep, keep crushing, crushing it. it. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. Listen, we love connecting with our listeners, so if you have any questions or topic requests, please email them to podcast at thefitnesslounge.net. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Fitness Lounge Podcast for more updates, tips, and content. You can also follow us on Twitter at, at Fitness Lounge 3. We are excited to take this wonderful journey with you, and we'll see you next time here at the Fitness Lounge.